This video is about energy saving techniques for a UE in 5G to conserve UE's battery power. I will give you a brief introduction upon RRC states, DRX, and CDRX. When there is a data transfer between base station and UE, then both SRB and DRB are active, and this state is called RRC connected state. Similarly, if there is no data transfer between UE and base station for a long duration, then base station can release both DRB and SRB connections, and this state is called RRC idle state. In RRC idle state, UE can sleep and doesn't listen to any signal from base station. When the UE wants to transmit or receive data, the base station has to first change UE's state back to RRC connected. To reduce the latency, 5G introduced an intermediate state called RRC inactive. In RRC inactive state, UE's SRB is connected, but DRB is released. RAN can manage the switching between RRC inactive and RRC connected state much faster without involving core network. Assume a scenario where UE is in RRC idle or RRC inactive state, and the base station wants to transmit a downlink data. Before transmitting downlink data, base station has to change UE state to RRC connected state by sending a special signal called paging signal. But UE is unreachable during sleep time, so UE cannot listen to paging signal. Therefore, UE has to wake up periodically and monitor the paging signal. To be more precise, UE has to wake up periodically and stay awake for a small duration and go back to sleep again, and then repeat this cycle again. This periodic wake up and sleep cycle is called discontinuous reception, or DRX. These wake up and sleep states are also called DRX active and DRX inactive states respectively. Base station and UE must be synchronized to ensure that the base station sends paging signal only when UE is awake. Different UEs will have different offsets for the wake up and sleep cycles, so that base station gets enough resources to allocate paging signal for all UEs. These offsets and DRX cycle durations are determined by core network and conveyed to UE using a special parameter inside the RRC configuration. Next, assume a second scenario where UE is in RRC idle or RRC inactive state, and UE wants to transmit an uplink data. Before transmitting uplink data, UE has to change its state back to RRC connected state. For this purpose, UE sends a scheduling request to base station, and base station invokes the procedure to change UE state to RRC connected state. Note that, UE has to send scheduling request only during the time slots configured for it by base station. Thy similar sleep wake-up cycle is also applied in RRC connected state as well, which is called connected mode discontinuous reception or CDRX. If CDRX cycle periodicity is high, then we can conserve more of UE's battery. But the latency would also become high because base station has to wait longer for UE to wake up before it can transmit downlink data. On the other hand, if CDRX cycle periodicity is low, then the latency is low, but the UE's energy consumption would be high. Therefore, CDRX periodicity has to be set properly. To improve latency without compromising the energy efficiency, DRX short cycles are introduced just after UE enters into sleep. This is because there is high probability for data transfer just after the UE goes into the sleep. 
so Yui wakes up and sleeps in a short cycle for some duration, then switches to long cycle if there is still no data transfer. The corresponding wake-up time duration is called DRX on duration timer and the periodicity is called DRX short cycle. The number of short cycles is called DRX short cycle timer, which is 2 in this example. Correspondingly, the long cycle has a DRX cycle periodicity of DRX long cycle. Note that all these parameters are RC parameters sent from base station to UE. To reduce latency again without compromising energy efficiency, a new concept called event-based wake-up period extension is introduced. The idea is that if a specific event happens when the UE is awake, then the UE extends its wake-up period for an additional time duration. For example, if UE receives a PDCCH with a downlink data scheduling, then the UE extends its wake-up period for a duration of DRX and activity timer. During this period, if UE receives an additional PDCCH with another downlink scheduling, then UE restarts the timer and stays awake until the timer expires. Another event is when UE receives an errored packet in downlink. In that case, UE sends a NAC and waits for retransmission from base station for a duration of DRX Harkar DD timer DL, then wakes up for a time duration of DRX retransmission timer DL. The buffer time period DRX Harkar DT timer DL is for base station to process NAC and schedule a retransmission in downlink. Another event is when a UE completes an uplink transmission. After transmitting uplink data, UE waits for a duration of DRX Harkar DT timer UL and then stays awake for a duration of DRX retransmission timer UL. This is because in case base station receives the uplink packet in error, then UE has to be awake to listen to the retransmission request by base station. These events can be co-occurring also. For example, while waiting for the request for retransmission, UE may receive a downlink data. In that case, UE starts DRX in activity timer and extends its wake-up duration until all timers expire. In summary, UE stays awake until all its timers expire. I hope this video helps you to get a basic understanding of RRC states, DRX and CDRX. I've left out a lot of details here to keep things simple. You can read more about it in the references in the description below. Thank you for watching.